Hello everyone, this is Zook and this is going to be part two of my tutorial series on how to draw without boring yourself to death and drawing a million triangles and shit. So this is going to be the episode about eyes. Um, I'm going to start off with drawing a few examples of eyes I like, uh, mostly reptile eyes really, because I'm of the firm belief that to uh, show expression you need to use stuff that's associated with certain human feelings. And reptiles in general are associated with... Uh, you know, cold blood, um, instilling fear in human beings, stuff, stuff like that. So reptile eyes are often used um, just to to show, basically to portray um, fear or to instill fear in whoever is um, gazing at the picture. A lot of negative characters have uh, reptile eyes if you see cartoons and stuff like that. So uh, it's just appealing to the human, to human psychology, really. And that's a big sort of a big part of drawing overall or any sort of art, really. It has to produce a certain kind of feeling. So this, what I'm going to start with here is a snake eye. Snakes have different uh, hundreds, if not thousands of kinds of eyes. But the general features of snake eyes is uh, the pupil is vertical um elongated and it can have it can be perfectly shaped like a, an ellipse or it can be just a very random shape like the one i drew right there i think that's actually used as a logo of a company somewhere or some some sort of game cover but in any case it's a real snake eye like it's not made up shit or anything so i'm um, obviously a lot of the eye is not going to be visible in an actual drawing but uh, I'm going to do my best to <laughs> show you like the actual uh, shading of the geometric shape. Basically, the snake eye doesn't really have an iris because I found out what, what the name was. Uh, the pupil is the black one and the iris is the, the thing around it. So um, the iris basically is just a very light uh, contour around the pupil. So that basically means just leave it alone and don't do anything to it. Just leave it white. And a lot, another feature that they have is that they have a lot of very, very thin veins intertwined, all uh, radiating towards the, the pupil. So the way I draw that usually is just a lot of random hand movements, like squiggly lines, as I did with the, uh, the human eye in the last episode. But these are longer and um, they stretch like all over the surface of the eye. So you got to be a bit more careful with that. But it is, in fact, just random squiggly lines, as you'll see there in a second. And um, I shaded a bit around the so-called iris. Really, it's around the space uh, surrounding the pupil uh, to show that it, it is somewhat three-dimensional because some eyes look like that. Some eyes actually uh, look like the pupil is embedded inside the eye and the, the rest of the eye is like above it. So just to give it a, a sense of 3D really so there are the random squiggly lines um, a lot of people will compliment me I suppose on sometimes sometimes they do sometimes they don't on the complexity of my drawings the thing is I'm not aiming for complexity um, fact is a lot of times when I draw I just let my hand go and that sounds like bullshit which should not be a part of this series because this is the after all the no bullshit approach but it's true, like if you tense your hand when you draw, when, when you're aiming for something random and you move your elbow and not your wrist, like not the way I'm holding my pencil there, but the way I'm going to be holding it later, uh, you get a lot of random shapes. God damn it, I should have watched for the light. It's shining like crazy. I don't know why. There we go. Um, you're going to get a lot of random shapes and just basically hold your hand still, don't move your wrist and just move your elbow like back and forth, up and down. And you will get a, ran a lot of random shapes like those those veins that I drew on the eye. They are intertwined, they look very realistic, but they're completely uncalculated, like I did not aim for that. And, and a very important thing about the eye is the highlight. As soon as you give an eye a highlight, it looks like, just drastically changes its appearance. It actually looks like a real eye. Um, using my electric eraser there to just define the edge of the highlight and then uh, my needed eraser to just push some of the graphite back to give it the highlight. And there you go. That's the snake eye. Uh, the next time I'm going to be drawing is the crocodile eye, which is slightly more complicated. Uh, the pupil is smaller in the crocodile eye and it has, of course, different shapes and different sizes. Uh, but the crocodile eye is very dark, unlike the snake eye, and the veins or the spaces, whatever it is in there, they are very uh, thick, they're very black. So the, the eye is almost black around and lightens up towards the middle a little bit. Uh, the reason I'm talking about eyes so much is because 
Uh, they're always important, as you're going to see later on when I approach my drawing and actually draw the eyes that I, um, or one of these examples that I'm drawing here, I will apply it to my to my drawing. So again, a lot of random hand movements, really not aiming for anything, just aiming to um, define the overall shape of the uh, circle. Uh, I did a few episodes, not episodes, a few videos a while back on how to shade basic geometric shapes. If you look in the channel, just like how to draw or something like that. There, I did them months ago, but basically I show like how to, how to shade the sphere. So it looks actual three dimensional. And I talk a bit about shadows and where the light's supposed to be falling. So if you're interested in that, just check those out oh, some months ago They're in the drawing playlist, I think. Um, but here I'm just like darkening all around the edge of the eye and just uh, easing up on the pressure towards the middle. Now the way I hold my pencil there is kind of important because it allows me to make more more random movements than I would with uh, if I were holding it like in the writing style. It's just better for me. I don't know what's better for you. Also a short pencil definitely works better than a long one because it's uh, it's easier to manipulate. And uh, this is like this isn't very sped up really like um, this and the following segment is uh, overall like 50 minutes. And this video is going to be 20 minutes. That's kind of how I'm aiming it to uh, to have it. So it's only sped up like once in a bit. So this isn't like really slow. I'm, I'm going pretty quick with these. It's not a lot of detailing. I'm just scribbling, just doodling really. And it's already starting to look pretty good. At least it did when I, uh, when I drew it. I don't know about now with this shitty webcam. Uh, by the way, some guy offered to actually give me his webcam. That's fine and all, but this webcam isn't bad. I don't know why you th people think that it's coming out so bad. I mean, it's an HD webcam. It's 720p. Uh, when I'll have enough money to be able to just spend it on random shit, then I'll, maybe I'll buy a 1080p. But uh, I don't know. It's I mean, it's a good webcam, so it should pick shit up. Maybe it's just the lighting. I think the lighting should be changed more than anything. So anyway, that's basically the crocodile eye. Darker at the edges and lining up towards the middle. A lot of veins, lots of... Um, uh, blacks, dark spaces, and around the pupil, there's just the light space fading, fading away into uh, the darkish veins. Now, what I'm doing is just uh, darkening up um, some of the spaces, like where a lot of veins were overlapping. I just darken those spots up to show that it's a depression inside the eye, because that's actually what it is. It's not a vein popping out. It's a depression going in. So um, that's kind of how I approach it. But of course, when you actually draw something in, in on a A4 page, uh, the scale is so small that you won't go into as much detail. Uh, there, I apply the highlight, and you can see that it start it instantly started looking like an actual eye, quite realistic. So I'm happy with that. Um, so yeah, at an in an actual drawing, you won't get to do, to work on the eye so much. But I actually get to do that somewhat in the drawing. I'm. I've decided to make as an example for this uh, series. Now the third eye I'm going to be drawing is a frog eye. And frog eyes are like crazy, crazy complex. This sort of, this was a natural progression from simple to complicated, even though I didn't aim for it to be like that. I just chose like th three random reptiles, uh, searched for eyes on Google images for the respective creatures and just drew them. This is my first time actually drawing a reptile eye. As you can see, it didn't turn out so bad. So the frog eye has the pupil the other way around, like horizontally, not vertically. And it doesn't look as fierce for some reason, at least when I look at it. It doesn't, from the start, when the pupil is uh, horizontal, it does not look as evil as the vertical versions. It's just, that's kind of the feeling that gets uh, um, felt by me. So the frog eye is truly, truly random. Like, there is no method to the frog eye. It's just a bunch of shit. Some frogs have really light eyes. Some frogs have really dark eyes, like this one is going to have. So I just try to make a bunch of random lines, and I'm pressing very hard on the pencil. The eye is mostly black in the end. And I'm just trying to get some small white spaces in between the lines to show the pattern, because it's a very random and complex pattern. It's, it can't really be put into words. You just got to sort of eye it. Uh, on top of it, above the pupil, there's going to be like this random vein or whatever it is, just uh, a line of color passing through that sort of looks like something veiny um, and just branching out into smaller, thinner veins or whatever. I call them veins, but I'm sure they're not veins. They're something else, but I don't care what they are. I just care how they look like. So 
again, doing the same thing as with the crocodile eye, just a bunch of lines overlapping. Um, not much else to say really here. <laughs> it's uh, just about uh, trying to portray it as well as possible. Um, a tip that I have for people drawing is like always keep your pencil sharp because even though you're not doing actual detail work, I mean this what I'm doing here can be named detail work by someone that thinks I'm doing detail work but what I'm doing is just moving my hand randomly. So keep a pencil sharp because it's much easier to um, uh, achieve what you want to achieve with it and it's much more it facilitates drawing much more. That's all I can say, really. Like, it facilitates happy accidents. Oh, fuck's sake. People messaging me now. Uh, basically, as Bob Ross used to put it, uh, when you're, when you're drawing something, a lot of happy accidents happen. So a lot of random stuff that can start looking like something intentional. That's basically 90% of, of my drawing, of, of the principle my drawings around, or, uses it's basically happy accidents like randomness that looks like something and when it starts looking like something you can work on that like start like just coloring a page fully black and then with random pencil patterns and then finding that certain uh, overlapping areas start looking like depression like I did with the eye so darken those and then just stuff just starts looking like a texture it's all about getting these please stop messaging me it's all about getting these textures and making them look natural and the way uh, in nature, I mean, some textures are f fully, fully random. Like you cannot, there is no pattern. There's just stuff, just stuff. And trying to copy random stuff is more difficult than you think because it's, after all, it's completely random. So humans work after patterns. We follow patterns whenever doing anything. And when something is absolutely random, then it's, it becomes more difficult. It's confusing. So I'm finishing the fucking frog eye now. <laughs> worked on that more than I worked on the previous two eyes. Um, as you can see, it's quite complex. Not really a pattern to it. It's very random. Now I'm just lightening that part up to show that there's that's where the light is shining from. Uh, just rubbing over it with my um, needle eraser. It's the best. And then applying the highlight to the pupil. Um, then I'm darkening the edge around it because the light doesn't go all the way to the back. It just shines on the, the front hemisphere. And that's about it for the eyes. Now I'm, I, uh, I made a new sketch for the drawing that I sketched out last time on a proper paper this time. And I'm going to be drawing the eyes this episode because, um, it, after all, it is an episode about eyes. Um, Anytime now. There we go. So what I'm going to be using is the crocodile eyes. They just appeal to me much more because of the random shape of the pupil and those like really black, dark, vein, veiny things. Um, what else can I talk about? Oh, yeah. And a very important thing that I have been actually doing for a year now and I didn't uh, acknowledge it. So if you have a webcam... It's like one of the most useful things you can do with it is uh, suspend it above your drawing if you're actually doing it. Uh, open up your recording program, whatever it is, mine is Logitech, Vid, whatever the hell it comes with. Uh, but place it so that it isn't looking the same direction you're looking, but it's looking upside down. Uh, you can just do that in the cam settings as well, like flip it or left and right or up and down, whatever you want. And just look at it once in a while. Just leave it on your monitor and just look at it once in a while because it is like a of tremendous help uh, seeing it upside down uh, this is one of the things our teachers are actually right about like they tell you like flip your drawing or look at it in the mirror sometimes and you'll notice things that you don't notice straight away and it's true it, it actually happens for some reason it's just the way the human eye percepts these things mistakes can happen and it's annoying that you don't see them until the, st the thing is finished and you're like it happened to me before like it happened to me plenty of times finishing a drawing and then looking at it in Premiere Pro where it's recorded upside down and seeing how freaking distorted it looks or how big uh, something is like an eye or something is compared to the other one or something like that it's it happens all the time and because I'm whenever I draw I'm basically recording uh, I always look at the monitor once in a while just to check if everything is okay uh, even in this drawing I made a mistake with the eye like the left eye you can see there it's it the bottom side is sharper than on the right eye and I spent some time correcting that after looking at it on the on the screen. So that's a very good use for a webcam. Um, what else? 
I'm just detailing out the eyes just the same way I did with the crocodile eye, nothing really special about it. And there I start fixing the eye because I noticed it is completely uh, unsymmetrical, so that had to be done. Um, let's see, I was gonna talk about something else. Oh yeah, a lot of um, a lot of art teachers nowadays, and actually since for a while now, uh, say that you should never flip your drawing, like never flip your paper, always move your hand. But to be quite frank, I learned how to draw doing what feels natural. And this for me is fully natural. If you watch any of my videos, I'm bound to flip my freaking page up and down like hundreds of times throughout it. It's just, it's just something that works for me. And I, sometimes it facilitates me drawing something symmetrical when I can draw it on the vertical as opposed to the horizontal. It's just easier because it's one downward movement. Whenever I'm detailing like on the, on the eyes, I always do this like I'm doing right now. So there's, I don't think there's anything, um, wrong with it because like traditional uh, artists work on um i don't know what it's called in english in romanian it's chevalet which is basically that stand on which your your canvas rests uh in that situation you can't really flip the page so you just gotta turn around but in this case i see no reason for which i should compromise when i can uh, do whatever feels natural i don't know what the hell i'm doing there i think i got a phone call or something so anyway, I'm finishing the eyes, uh, drawing the eyelids now. I'm not going to draw the eyebrows today. I'm going to do those when I do the nose, I think, because the nose is uh, its not that much to talk about with noses, really. Uh, just remembering that because the eyelid is um, covering the eye, it's also going to have a somewhat round shape, like a hemisphere. So it's going to be lighter toward the viewer. Whatever is uh, closer to the viewer in 3D space is going to be lighter because it's closer to the light, uh, thinking that the light is the same place where the viewer is, or the top left, for example. So darkening it towards the edges, lightening it in the middle-ish, not exactly the, just the middle-ish, and then just darkening it around the eyes. One very important element when drawing eyes that people a lot of times forget is that uh, the lower eyelid, there needs to be a small white space between the eye and the lower eyelid, because the lower eyelid is almost facing the viewer so because it's thick because it's skin uh, it's lighter on the on that little ridge that's exactly uh, between the eye and the uh, eyelashes on the lower eyelid uh, a lot of words with eye here i'm gonna fuck something up so there needs to be a highlight there and what it does is also accentuate the eye at the same time as i'm gonna be uh, showing you guys in a second so I've seen a lot of people who send me drawings and stuff like please check this out They draw eyes and then they draw eyelids or they draw the rest of the face like the eye needs to have that shit It needs to have eyelids both up and down like no eye really just Gets goes into just the skull and that's it like there needs to be a rest for it And I'm doing that right there now as you can see is um, just a very thin line between the eye and the eye and the rest of the face and it does a whole lot to make the eye pop out and uh, not fade it. Because the eyelid, um, because it's in the eye socket, the whole installation, both eyelids and the eye, it's going to be darker because it's it's further away from the viewer. So that white space needs to be there to just uh, frame the eye. Enough about that shit. This is like <laughs> going into more detail than I really should. But this shit is stuff that I've noticed and stuff that regular tutorials don't really approach like they just say like oh shade with uh, this pencil and that pencil and this and that what i used for the drawing and for the eyes was a 3b pencil and a b mechanical like 3b was more than enough to give me the contrast i needed so that's about it as you can see i didn't draw eyelashes there because eyelashes i think are, are a bit too human so i'm trying to not go for uh, human stuff as i'm using reptilian eyes um so yeah that's going to be about it for the eyes. This is going to be the first part of my drawing. The shading, I guess I'll get into that uh, later on. But there's, I mean, again, it's it's hard for me to talk about the method when I don't have a method. I just do whatever feels natural. Um, for the eyes here, the only thing I that I didn't show already or talk about is how to shade the eyelids. And that's basically putting the pencil on the paper and rubbing it back and uh, forward, like left and right. So there's not much else to say, really. But uh, I don't know. I hope you guys found this interesting. And um, I'm going to continue next time with either nose or ears, maybe. We'll see. 
There I apply the highlight, instantly looks better. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.